In a world of talkers, Matt Burke is a doer. His list of accomplishments speak for themselves. Harvard University graduate, NFL All-Pro, Walter Payton Man of the Year, Super Bowl champion. Matt's unique resume gives him a one-of-a-kind perspective that is extremely valuable. The title of my speech is, What Makes Teams Great? For the last 15 years, my workplace has been an NFL locker room, which is a pretty unique workplace. I was fortunate enough to play 200 games in the NFL. So when I played my 200th game, a couple young guys came up to me and they said, hey man, you know, what's the, what's the secret? I said, there's no secret. I said, you work hard. That's the, that's the secret to success, right? We always want the secret, we always want the easy way. There is no easy way. Great teams, great teams understand that. They understand that when you work hard, that gives you a chance to have a chance. It's 95% preparation, and you need to have team preparation. You can never go into a game saying, oh, you know, this one guy, he can, he can just do his thing and, and, and he's going to bail us out. Everybody has to prepare. I mean, on offense, you know, they give you a playbook. It's like, it's like that fit. Uh, that's the offensive, the defensive playbook's one sheet. <laughs> it's got a picture of the football and it says, go get it. <laughs> Matt Burke is one of the great hidden gems right now in terms of business speakers. His talk, I think he connects with the audience incredibly uh, because of that authenticity. Obviously, people like the football stories, but you know, it's amazing as he, as he finished off his talk, you could tell how deep the message was just beyond football. I thought he was fantastic. I took a whole bunch of quotes, wrote them down. Everything about leadership, getting that team engaged, really, really critical, and it was a, it was a great message. His insights into leadership, teamwork, inspiration and success are applicable and useful to any organization or corporation. So we start with the fundamentals. Now, center's a little bit different. You gotta snap the ball to the quarterback on every single play. So you gotta bend over, you know, I'll save you the, so you gotta bend over, and the quarterback's gotta put his hands underneath you. It takes a little getting used to. 15 years, I don't know if I ever quite got used to it. It doesn't just happen. Every single day of my NFL career, I had to go out five minutes early with the quarterbacks, and we would just practice snapping the football. And we would practice every single day. Friday was wet ball day. So Friday, they have a five gallon bucket of water, they dunk the balls in the water, and then hand them to the center, and the center's gotta stand with the quarterback, in case we play when it rains. I would never understand that when I played for the Vikings and we had a home game that week. <laughs> but we just did it. That was what we did. Every Friday was wet ball day. When I'm in a game and I'm over the ball and there's a 350 pound nose tackle with his lined up this far from my face and he's got bad intentions and a small rap sheet. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to be thinking about the quarterback's hands or if he's going to get the ball. Is that, I, that snap's got to be automatic. I got to be able to execute that without even thinking. That basic movement, I, without even thinking, so I can do my job. The fundamentals never ever change. And that's the point. That's the beauty of them. The only thing that changes is your attention to them. I have great respect for Peyton Manning. You know, he's probably the greatest quarterback or will be the greatest quarterback to ever play the game. It's not like Peyton Manning goes out there and throws the ball and it starts going this way and then it curves over here and then goes, what Peyton Manning does is he executes the fundamentals over and over and over. I'll guarantee you on Sunday when he throws the slant route to Wes Welker and he catches it, Wes Welker will know where the ball is going to be, exactly when it's supposed to be there. I'll guarantee you this week in practice they're running the same amount of slant routes that they've been running for the last 15 years of Peyton Manning's career because the fundamentals don't change. And that consistency, that's what makes players great. It was fantastic. His message would apply across all walks of business. Absolutely. It was great. Great stories. Makes you realize that well, at any level, you were all trying to achieve the same thing, be better at what we're doing. It's a great story. It's also um, so analogous to business. Oh, he was fantastic. That's right. We'd actually wait to say hi to him right now. So the football message, how it translates into business, it's just it's tremendous. It's really good. We need to identify the fundamentals of character. Broke it down to four things. Wisdom, respect, self-control, and courage. Wisdom, right? We all want to be wise. The wise person knows that he or she does not have all the answers. When making a decision, important decision especially, 
A wise person seeks counsel, makes judgment, and takes action. Not only do you make the right decision then, but I think if people see that's how you operate, they respect you more. Respect. Albert Einstein, he was a smart guy. He said, I talk to everybody as if they're the same, whether it's the president of the university or the janitor. If somebody of character doesn't judge anybody, doesn't hold themselves in any higher esteem than anybody else. Self-control. There's a lot of things out there that are pulling for our, our attention, our affection, our, our focus, money, food. I mean, you name it, right? We know, we know what they all are. Someone who can exercise self-control, can, can find that balance and not be controlled by anything external. And courage. Courage is doing the right thing all the time, no matter what. You do those four things, I think you, that's, that's developing and deepening your character. And when you do that, you develop stability in your life. People trust you because you're consistent. You're a consistent person. Football coaches, they, they want consistency. They want to know exactly what they're getting out of you as a player or any of their players every single week. I mean, it might vary a little, but they don't want a guy that's up here, you know, plays great one week, then the next week he's terrible, and then he's here, and he's, they want consistency. Isn't that what we all want? We all want to be consistent, and we all want to be with consistent people. And if you're consistent, and you breed that trust, then you're somebody worth following. There's a lot of books on leadership. There's a lot of ideas. There's a lot of strategies, techniques. But then I was thinking, well, I don't know. I think in this country, I think we have a shortage of good leaders. I'll guarantee you one thing, the team that wins the Super Bowl will be a team that has great leadership on that team. Some people know I, I retired this past year too. There was no standing ovations or tears shed, which is okay. Um, but there's 53 guys on an NFL roster. It's, it's numbers. 10 through 53 on your team, if you're gonna rank your players from best to, to worst, it's players 10 through 53, those are the guys that win you a championship. Everyone's got the superstars, but it's what team, what bottom of the roster is engaged, is inspired, is motivated for the team goal? How do you, how do you plug these guys in? Because there, there's, there is, you know, there's like anything else, you know, there's, you have superstars and you have, you have the lunch pail guys. But how, how, how do you get those guys down here to come up and, and, and buy in? You gotta plug them into your power source. That they can personally connect to us, I think that's really a good thing for the event. There's all these books, different philosophies, and they, they, I'm sure they're all great, but it has to start with trust. How could you follow somebody, or how could you be somebody worth following if people don't trust you? I think that's something we would all want to, want to strive for. A couple weeks ago, we were sitting across from Roger Goodell in his office in New York, and he said the biggest problem is people with high competence and low character, because those people can hurt you in an organization. If someone has low competence, you know, they're going to stay down here. They can't really affect too much. But when people have high competence and low character, it's a problem. It's a problem in any company, any organization. Look no further than a few years ago with the economic collapse of almost our entire world. Those were highly competent individuals, but they obviously lacked character. He comes across as just a, a wonderful guy, and he is a wonderful guy. Every, every person I talk to about Matt Burke talks about how nice he is and how personable he is, and that came across to the audience today. Matt cares about the success of your event, and your attendees will truly enjoy his presentation. You made it. It was a long, hard road. There were times that you wanted to give up, but you made it. I'm talking to the parents. <laughs> but. I thought this was the most amazing commencement ever. He provided just the right levity and tribute to the students, and it was really fun and energetic. Best commencement I've ever been in. For a speaker and a message that will leave a lasting impact, Book Matt Burke.